Human beings aren't always great at disposing of things properly when they're no longer needed. That goes for small things like phones and computers, but it also goes for much larger things like cars, trains, boats, and even planes. The most sensible thing to do with a vehicle when it's no longer required is to scrap it or sell it. But the most sensible route isn't always the one that's chosen. Sometimes vehicles and pieces of technology that were once considered incredible are left behind and abandoned, like everything you're about to see in this video. The existence of the round-oared Rolls-Royce is something of an enigma. According to documentation, it was built to order for a Mrs. Hugh Dillman of Detroit, USA in 1925. But there's no record of any such person existing, and the car was never delivered to her. Instead, this vehicular oddity, which is designed around the frame of a Phantom 1 but fitted with a custom cabriolet body, was shipped to an unknown customer in India, and then sold abroad again in 1934, this time to an owner in Belgium. In Belgium, it underwent further customization by the Yonkiri Body Company, but after that, its movements were unknown until the 1950s, when it was found in a scrapyard in New Jersey painted gold and accompanied by fake documents, which tried to portray the car as the property of the former King Edward of England. Fortunately, it was rescued from its date with the scrapper and headed abroad again to Japan. It underwent another 10 years of abandonment between 1991 and 2001, before it finally ended up in the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles, where you'll find it today. During the First and Second World Wars, networks of tunnels and bunkers were built all over Europe, some of which were used to home soldiers, and others of which were used to store equipment. Almost all of them have long since been stripped of any weaponry or facilities. But that can't be said of all of them. This one, which can be found in a forest in a secret location in France, is still heavily armed. Based on the equipment that's in there, it appears that it was used by occupying German forces, which would explain the presence of a Model 1896 cannon tanks from the First World War, along with German-designed military trucks and armored vehicles. There's also much more recent military equipment hiding in the dark here too, alongside the remains of what appears to be a mushroom farm. Apparently, whoever was working in the dark to cultivate mushrooms didn't mind being up close and personal with dangerous weapons and machinery. The bunker is officially off-limits to civilians, although that hasn't stopped multiple urban explorers getting in to take pictures. While France is happy to leave its unwanted military stock in bunkers and tunnels, Jordan has found a more unconventional way to dispose of old tanks. It's turned them into artificial reefs, and now divers are allowed to get up close and personal with the former war machines. The country's military spent a whole week in July 2019 deliberately sinking tanks, anti-aircraft guns, and combat helicopters to create the reef which can be found just off the coast of Aqaba in the Red Sea. There are 19 pieces of military hardware in the water, making up what the Jordanian authorities are calling an underwater military museum. Before being committed to the water, each of the vehicles was treated with a special coating that will, hopefully, allow them to integrate with the coral reef that already exists in the area, and hopefully appeal to the marine life they'll share space with. Each of the museum pieces was lowered into place using a military crane. And then the crane itself was lowered into the water as the final piece of the puzzle. While we're on the topic of abandoned or decommissioned military equipment, here's a whole fleet of former Russian and Soviet military vehicles standing in a clearing in the middle of a forest not far from St. Petersburg. There's an enormous variety of equipment here, including multiple units of the PMZ-4 mine layer, the MTU-90 armored bridge layer, the PTS-2 tracked transport, and the MDK-3 excavator, along with more conventional tanks and trucks. There's no fencing up around the equipment, nor any explanation as to what it's all doing here. Some of the vehicles are obviously in states of disrepair, but others appear to be undamaged and presumably still work. Someone obviously went to a lot of trouble to get them here, as towing the BMK-150 motorboats wouldn't have been an easy task. 
but now they're here, they appear to have been abandoned. It's impossible not to think that this is a waste of what must be several million dollars worth of equipment. And it's strange that it's been allowed to stand in the open, as opposed to being hidden away in hangars or other storage facilities. It's easy to understand how an old, broken-down car can come to be abandoned. They're hard to sell, and if they have no value, the owners sometimes lock the doors and walk away. It's far harder to understand why cars like the Bentley Bentayga and the Rolls-Royce Phantom end up being abandoned, as they have in this enormous luxury car graveyard in China. The answer to the conundrum is that all of these high-value cars were caught up in criminal activity. The owners of the vehicles entered into a pyramid scheme in which they claimed to be able to sell the cars for far less than their market value. But the owners of the business disappeared with all the money after taking deposits on the orders. They were eventually caught, and their entire car collection was impounded. Why the cars haven't been sold to refund the customers that they stole from is unknown, though. They'd still attract a fair price if they were cleaned up and put on the market. But instead, they've been left to stand in this car park where they're exposed to the elements and losing value all the time. Big Brutus, which is the name that was given to the colossal Bucyrus Erie Model 1850B electric shovel in West Mineral, Kansas, USA, holds the distinction of being the biggest electric shovel in the world. It's 160 feet tall, weighs 5,500 tons, and operated on 15,000 horsepower back in the days it was running. The shovel's bucket could lift as much as 150 tons of coal in a single scoop. Unfortunately, it was too big for its own good. The amount of coal it could shift was impressive, but it cost so much to run Big Brutus that over time, the value of the coal it shifted fell to half the amount of money that was required to keep it operating. In a single day, it used as much electricity as a town of 15,000 people. Brutus's owners eventually had to pull the plug, but the machine has since become a tourist attraction and is open to the public, who are allowed to climb up the 16-story boom so long as the weather is fair. The area around the shovel is now a mining museum. Back in the 1950s, Kukov Air Base in Albania was a highly advanced military facility, sheltered by the nearby mountains and offering protection for a fleet of Chinese and Soviet-built aircraft during the Cold War. Times have moved on since then, and the airbase has long since been abandoned, but the planes were left in situ. Today, there are more than 80 old MiG fighters still standing on the tarmac, slowly rusting away. The abandonment came after 1997 when rebel forces captured the airbase during the Albanian Civil War and damaged several of the planes, which led to the military riding them off after order had been restored. Aside from the MiG fighters, there are also Nanchang, Yakovlev, and Shenyang planes, making up a total fleet of more than 200. NATO recently took ownership of the airbase and has plans to modernize and reopen it which will probably lead to the scrapping of the unwanted planes in the near future. A few of them have been sold into private hands already, and hopefully at least some of them will be preserved as museum pieces. The history of Talasi Airstrip in Papua New Guinea is long and complicated. The Australian Army originally built it, but it was captured and occupied first by the Japanese, and then by the Americans during the Second World War. That's despite the fact that it was too small to accommodate most fighter planes, and had little use, other than as an emergency landing strip deep within the country's jungle. These days, the jungle has almost entirely reclaimed the land, but there are still two old planes standing on the runway. The first is an American B-25H bomber, which was damaged during a bombing raid in September 1944 and was forced to land here due to engine trouble after which it was written off. The second is a Lockheed Ventura, which also suffered engine failure after a bombing raid in Rabul and was forced to land here after the pilot realized he would never make it all the way back to base. The airstrip was abandoned after the war came to an end, and although palm oil plantations sprang up in the surrounding area, nobody ever came back to pick up their unwanted planes. 
The Grand Hermine is an extraordinary ship. Most ships only get wrecked once, if they ever get wrecked at all. The Grand Hermine has been wrecked three times. The vessel as it exists today is a rusty, burnt-out relic on the banks of Lake Ontario. It looks ancient, but that's because it's a replica of a three-masted sailing ship of the same name that was built during the 16th century. The original Grand Hermine is long gone, but a replica was built in 1967 when Montreal hosted the Expo event and operated as a floating restaurant. When the event came to an end, the replica ship went on display in a park in Ontario City, but wasn't looked after and eventually decayed so badly it became an eyesore, after which it was demolished. The Lake Ontario wreck is a second replica and was also opened as a floating restaurant, but the business didn't work out. And so the third Grand Hermine was also abandoned in 2003, shortly after which a fire broke out on board and destroyed much of the vessel. It's leaning over heavily to one side and might topple over one day, but it will retain its current status as a somewhat unorthodox tourist attraction until it does. To say that the American battleship USS Nevada was extremely resilient would be something of an understatement. After it was launched in 1912, it served in both world wars and survived the attack on Pearl Harbor, despite being struck by 10 bombs and one torpedo during the assault. After that, it developed a reputation for being unsinkable, and it lived up to that reputation. It fought on beyond Pearl Harbor, seeing action in Jima and Okinawa later in the war, and wasn't retired from service until after the war ended. Even after that, it was kept afloat and used for target practice by the military as they tested new weapons. Two atomic weapons were tested on the Nevada in the Marshall Islands in 1948, and even those didn't topple it or sink it beneath the waves. No ship could sink the mighty vessel, so she was ultimately destroyed by an aerial torpedo in July of that year. The wreck's precise location was lost over time, and it wasn't found again until May 2020 when an expedition by Ocean Infinity located what's left of her. She's upside down on the seabed, but amazingly, she's still mostly in one piece. Earlier on, we saw the world's largest electric shovel. Now, feast your eyes on Europe's largest walking dragline excavator. It's a Bucyrus Erie 1150 dragline, which stands on the fields of West Yorkshire in England. The colossal machine was built in the US and then shipped to the UK, where its operators gave it the nickname Oddball because it ran on an unorthodox voltage and made bizarre noises when it was up and running. Despite its giant size and 1,200 ton weight, Oddball is capable of walking using two enormous feet, which can shift it across the landscape at a top speed of around 0.2 miles per hour. It once worked at the coal mine at Swillington, close to Leeds, but the mine closed in 1983, and no further use could be found for Oddball. She was once scheduled to be dismantled, but she was saved by a local community group who've turned her into a tourist attraction, allowing visitors to climb up the structure and enjoy the view from the top. Sadly, due to a lack of power facilities to match its unusual voltage, it's no longer possible to switch Oddball on but it's an impressive thing to look at, even when it stood still. In 1963, a Brooklyn Navy ship fitter by the name of Jerry Bianco got a bizarre idea in his head. He decided that he was going to build a submarine by hand and use it to raise the wreck of the Andrea Doria cruise ship off the coast of Nantucket. He even convinced several backers to provide him with funding and got as far as building his sub by 1971. Crowds gathered to watch it launch at Coney Island Creek in 1971, but then disaster struck. A crane operator made an error of judgment as he lowered Bianco's submarine into the water, dropping it in too quickly and not giving Jerry and his team time to fill it with ballast to keep it upright. The submarine immediately flipped over and then sank. This very public embarrassment caused Jerry's investors to pull out of the project, and although he was eventually able to retrieve his submarine from the water, it was used only for tugboat and fishing duties from then on, four years later, in 1975. It was ripped from its moorings by a storm and damaged beyond repair. 
forcing Jerry to abandon it permanently. These days, it's half sunken in the water, although it occasionally finds use as a makeshift fishing platform. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.